Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today, the, today January the 8th, saw perhaps the biggest strike in Indian history as over 250 million workers across the country struck work. These workers are from various sectors and were joined by as farmers and agricultural workers as well and students. To talk more about this, we have with us A.R. Sindhu, the National Secretary of the Centre of Indian Trade Unions. Thank you so much for joining us. So before we get into some of the details regarding why the strike was organized, could you give us a quick idea of how the response has been throughout the country? The response was uh, almost uh, fantastic. And in 15 states, it was almost uh, like uh, the totally closed down. It's a bunt like situation. And then uh, the public sector, the coal, the, including the defense, the defense production sector, the strike, and the uh, heavy industries, then in the automobile industry, like in the in uh, Manesar in Gurgaon, that is a, a, a automobile hub. There was a total strike. Then in the anogni sector also, anogni sector it is difficult to find that how many were there, but it was almost uh, they came out on the streets for participation. Our estimation is to 50 million. It will not be less uh, less than that. And the thing is that the, there was tremendous uh, support and action from the part of the farmers and the agriculture workers also. And there were uh, rail band, rail roco, means actually rail, train has been stopped in many places. Many places train has to be cancelled. Then there was uh, even including national highways were blocked by the striking workers. And in many player parts of the country, there was a total transport uh, strike also. So that affected the public's transport and even the traders, small traders, petty traders were also part of the strike. They closed down automatically means by themselves also. That was that, mm, so the response to the trade union score uh, responded it has become a people strike. And uh, this policy, the policy decisions that the Narendra Modi government, a far right wing government has been implementing over the past few years. The workers have been fighting on a consistent basis for many years. But if you go back a bit into the past, this larger policy framework, the new liberal framework as we call it, it has started in the 90s. So what has been the difference since the Modi government came to power? What has been the, uh, say, the increase in the implementation of these reforms? And especially this year, what is the significance of the strike? This is the 19th strike after the neoliberal policies are started, the 19th general strike. Uh, from 1991 itself, after the Congress government at that time started implementing the neoliberal policies, the trade union movement was continuously on the struggle. And that year itself, we have given a call for general strike. And uh, there, were, there, is, there was no much difference in the policies. But what happened in the last more than five years is that the Modi government, which came to power in, on the basis of the discontent against the last Manmohan Singh led UPA government, which was implementing the same policies, neoliberal policies. So here Modi started in a very large scale, implementing in a very speedy way. Uh, whether it is the disinvestment of the public assets and the public sector companies, the um, the most uh, which are which are giving the revenue to the government, including the defense, the uh, the petroleum, the electricity sector, the, all the basic services, and that the Modi government went in a very speedy way, and now in the Modi two government. This uh, government, within 100 days of coming into power, they have almost in, in such a high speed, they have started implementing all those things, including the privatization of the rail and even the defense production, which the government called itself as a nationalist government and for the people and every uh, second they uh, speak about the our uh, armed forces and the arm, uh, armed produ production of the country has been stopped. They have given, stopped giving orders to the defense uh, production units and then declared that FDA will be brought in that also. And the rail, the uh, private trains are allowed to run in the railway tracks of the public sector company. This kind of pro uh, moves they were uh, taking. And also uh, on the farmers, 
the land acquisition or ordinance they have brought in the Modi one government and that has been stopped by the united movement of the workers and presence but the Modi two government again has declared that they will be they change the forest right act of the tribals and then the basic right of the workers that has been taken away by the uh, in the name of simplification of the labor laws the modi government said that we are having 44 labor laws that's too much so we want to bring down it to four labor codes the one code has already been passed the wage code that is taking away the basic two rights of the workers the eight hour working hour and also the minimum wages so now no more in India, the 8 hour uh, working day is no more there. That has been removed from the act and now the government can decide how much will be the uh, earlier in the act it was there the 48 hour working week and the 8 hour working day. Now it is no more there. Even in the overtime it can be uh, increased to any extent. The minimum wages also that they ha there was there is no criteria for the minimum wage in the act. So these are all the attack on the working class movement that is internationally acclaimed rights of the eight hour worker that also is been done away with. So, this is a very serious situation in the country and in addition to that the country is uh, the government this is a far right wing government is trying to divide the country in lines of the religion and the, this uh, citizenship amendment act they have brought is it is uh, in the name of uh, in, in including the refugees but they are uh, creating a divide among the people and it is against the constitution of India right. and it is uh, uh, against the democratic principles of India. So, that is an additional demand we are raising from this strike that is a uh, for the uh, withdrawal of this citizenship amendment act. And regarding the citizenship amendment act there has been a lot of <coughs> discussion protests have been taking place across the country. So, in addition to the national strike what what efforts have been the trade what efforts have the trade unions been taking across the country both with their membership and outside their membership to actually talk about this issue and to create an under consensus and understanding about this issue. Uh, see this government by its media and means it is a paid media they are trying to project it as a Hindu Muslim or a divide. But actually this act which is in, in India the Modi government came to power getting votes from the people and this voter identity card is not, an, uh, not a proof for your citizenship that is the act which they have brought. So, that, that means that then on which basis you are there in the power and moreover this is not only a case of Hindu or Muslim the workers the poor people they do not have even they do not know means their birth dates they do not have any document to prove that they are means any citizen of any, any country and whether it is they are refugees or not they cannot prove that they cannot prove that they are Indians and they cannot how can they prove that they are belong to any other country. So, the, the question is not, not about the Hindu or Muslim the question is about the poor people of the country they will be deprived of the citizenship the very basic right the entire the, a, any law will be applicable only to their citizens. So, the, if they, you are taking away that right and that in addition to that it will the basic democratic right you cannot vote you cannot vote any government out actually that is the purpose of bringing this act itself. Mm -hmm. So, we are taking it to our rank and file that is definitely but we are ha having um, our own uh, our workers work among the people. So, they uh, as members of the trade union we will be taking it to the common public also. It is a question of saving the country and its democracy. And uh, the other aspect you highlighted considerably in this strike is the issue of unemployment. And now India is facing a record uh, amount of unemployment right now. So, what do the trade unions suggest is a path forward to actually address this issue? You see this uh, unemployment has been always a problem that the now in the name of this uh, slowdown economic slowdown the government is again helping the employers uh, the automobile sector there is a recession they are uh, writing off the taxes they are giving them even incentives for uh, investment uh, the uh, loans are giving provided to them 
So there are in nowhere there is any condition for no retrenchment. So it has been always our demand that if you want to help the economy, if you want to give any incentive to any of the employer, so there you put a condition that the no worker will be retrenched and means for whom and the crisis it is itself is a crisis uh, created because of the lack of purchasing power. So without creating employment, without having minimum wages, how can you increase the purchasing power? Even we, uh, we were called by the government for a pre-budget discussions. There also we have raised this demand that you ensure, you guarantee that whichever company you are helping that there should not be any retrenchment and they should ensure minimum wages. And also the programs like the uh, rural uh, employment guarantee program which the government is uh, continuously curtailing the budget allocation to increase the budget allocation for the employment guarantee, how urban employment guarantee as well along with the rural employment guarantee and also you provide the unemployment allowance. So you will be getting uh, people will be their purchasing power will be increased. So there will be the economic can recover only through that. Right. So then you naturally then the uh, production or the investment will also increase and there will be employment also will be generated. But in, instead of that the government is doing even from the public sector like for the uh, public sector telecom company the BSNL it has been uh, they are planning to close it down actually um, disinvest in it also and 93,000 people are asked to uh, take for uh, voluntary retirement. So like that even in the railways there is no uh, appointment and instead that uh, through mergers and through uh, privatization they are even, even from the government sector the jobs have been lost. So this is the situation vis-a-vis -vis the employment. That is why we are getting um, the support of the youth organizations also which uh, they are already they are facing the problem of unemployment. So that, that has been reflected in the large participation of youth in the strike and also women. The uh, women's work participation in India is one of the lowest and now it is coming down further. So there there is uh, the women need employment and the precarity of the employment which already is there that is also one of the biggest issue. Nowhere in the country in the even in the organized sector, in the private sector, the minimum wage is not implemented. When the laws are there, that is not even being implemented. Now, even whatever uh, assurance in the law, that is also being done away with. And finally, what are the next steps as far as the trade unions are concerned regarding further protests? If uh, in, none of the demands were met by, by the government and if they are going along with the same kind of policies, there is a standing decision that we will be uh, planning for an indefinite strike. So that need a lot of preparation and already the rail employees, they have already declared uh, starting for a referendum for a strike, indefinite strike. And also in different sectors struggles are going on in the public sector like the petroleum, the PPCL, the one of the biggest oil companies in the world. There the employees are the already on the struggle, different sector struggles are already going on. And along with that the kind of a joint uh, struggle of a, it will take a shape of an indefinite struggle, a strike that we are planning that in the coming days definitely the government means even today I uh, heard that the government has declared another round of uh, disinvestment even today. So that means that the government is no way is ready to right. hear the workers and also the peasantry's demands also is there that for the minimum remunerative price for the uh, farmers. So that with all these that it will be definitely joined by the farmers in the future. In the future India can, in, in our country will witness um, bigger struggles in more militant forms. Thank you so much. That is all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,